thank you for coming out. Thank you for taking the time to stand with city council as we come together and unite against police brutality, against injustices, against unfair treatment over policing. Our communities have suffered. They've suffered long enough. And we, as a city council, are going to take a stand. In the coming weeks, you will see legislation that condemn police brutality, legislation to try to ensure that this happens nowhere else, to ensure that our communities feel safe and know that they're safe. We have to ensure that we have accountability on part of our police department, on part of our community and our community leaders. We have to ensure that our community feels safe and welcome to walk their streets, to come into our buildings, to speak out against injustices that they see. Kneeling down there for nine minutes was hard. I can only imagine the pain that Mr. Floyd felt as an officer knelt on him and squeezed the life from his body. The pain that we felt as we watched it is nothing in comparison to the pain that he felt going through it. And the fact that I don't think any of us were able to stay on one knee for nine minutes without having to give up, to get up, to switch knees, to do something. I think that shows, it shows how, how much effort was put into keeping Mr. Floyd down. And although Mr. Floyd is one case, we have many more names that we could call out and we'd be standing here for hours as we said their names and recognize the loss of their life and the things that they have went through. That's just the ones who have passed away. We can name many, many more names of people who have suffered injustices, especially in our, our low income and minority communities at the hands of police officers. Although our police officers here in Harrisburg do their best to ensure that we are kept safe and to ensure that they, they hold themselves to the highest regards. We as local officials have to ensure that our community feels safe. We have to ensure that we speak as the voice of our community and that we listen when our community speaks. I think it's been very clear that our community has spoken through the protests that have been happening, through the people who have marched these streets, through social media, through every platform. The community of Harrisburg has spoken and let it be known that they want something on paper, that they want something written to ensure that they are protected in their communities, that their officers are held to the highest regards by their local officials and by the law. So I thank everyone for coming out. If you have any questions, please feel free. Legislation um, that, that's condemning police brutality. Uh, some some legislation to ensure that our communities are, are safe and, and feel safe. Um, it'll speak to, to banning the use of chokeholds. It'll speak to uh, ensuring that, that uh, before tear gas can be used, it has to come from the highest levels of the police rank, such as the police chief. It's to ensure that we have accountability and everything can be traced back. Um, it'll include things like um, use of force reporting to ensure that every year, the public can be, be sure to know how much force was used in their community by their police officers so that they can then hold them accountable just as well as, as we can hold them accountable. We don't want any if, ands, or buts. We want transparency. And we have to ensure that we call for it. Um, I've spoken to many community members, not just recently, but, but over the years, and being born and raised here in Harrisburg, I, I've witnessed a lot of uh, the policing. Um, Over-policing is a thing of relativity. Some might feel that it's over-policed, some might feel that it's under-policed, but some might just say it depends on which area of the community you step into, whether you're stepping into Uptown, Midtown, Allison Hill, South Harrisburg. We need to make for sure that there aren't disparities, that when someone picks up the phone to call an officer, they feel safe calling that officer, and that they don't feel like that they're being targeted in their communities, that they feel safe that the community, that the police are a part of the community. We have the community policing division, but we also need to make sure every officer, not just the community policing officers, are ingrained in our communities so that the people in our communities know them. Growing up, we had DARE officers um, in our schools that allowed us to get to know our officers better. 
although we're trying to bring back programs, we have to ensure that, that outside of just the schools, we need our adults to feel safe. We need our elderly people to feel safe. And during a time when every time you turn on the TV, you see police violence, you see riots, you see people being killed by police officers, that, I mean, we don't live in a silo, you know? So these things impact us as well. It, it impacts the way we feel when we get pulled over by a police officer. Because you see these things happen, although it might not have happened directly in your community, you feel the impact of it because we live in a nation that the media is nationalized. You know, uh, you know, we've got social media that's, that's worldwide. We're able to see all these things play out in real time. So they affect us in real time and we need to make for sure that we have something to protect us in real time. Oh, um, I'm the chair of the public safety department, so I'll, I'll be working with the police department. I'll also I'll be working with council to ensure we have the accountability of the police department. Oh, my name is Asha Green, A-U-S-H-A, Green, G-R-E-E-N, and I'm the uh, public safety chair for the Harrisburg City Council. Uh, I know at some point there was discussion of community advisory board. Is that being played around with at all? Yes, that's being played around with. Um, I've had some, some legislation that I've been working with. Um, I've met in the past with, um, with Brandon Floyd, who was a, a, a very outspoken person about the, the police advisory board, and I've had conversations with him. I've showed him some of the legislation I've work, uh, been working on. My main thing is I don't just want something symbolic. You know, I, I, I don't want symbolism. I don't want it to be that we pass something to say we pass something. We need to make sure whatever we pass is actually going to ensure what we want it to ensure. Because if not, it's just, it's a lip service. And I don't want to give the people of Harrisburg lip service. I don't want to give them something to say we passed the legislation. Are you happy now? I want to give them something to say we have accountability in this legislation that can follow for many years. Years when none of us are on council, we want to make for sure that the legacy continues and can be built upon to ensure we have the, the accountability. Yeah, Councilwoman, I got, uh, forgive me, I, I, I clearly know where, you, where the council is going here. There's been a lot of talk at the national level and the local level about, at the municipal level, council members having, it's about accountability. And like, you know, there's union contracts and things like that at, at various levels. <laughs> But direct accountability at the municipal level with council, the administration, and the police department can still happen. Yes. Even if a contract's in place. Yes. And is this really what this is all about that you're talking yeah. about? Yes. We're, we're about having the actual accountability. We understand that there are contracts in place, but we understand that the community are, is who we serve. It's who we all work for. So whatever contract's in place, the community's the one who provides the funding. The community is the one who deserves the accountability. So it's about putting something on the book so that even with contracts in place, it can be worked around. Because as you all know, and everyone here knows, it's no secret that it's tough to hold police accountable because there are union protections. But yet and still, they say that more can be done at our municipal level for quicker accountability. And, and I mean, is that kind of... Yes, that, that's true. Um, and that's what we're going for here. Um, use of force reporting will allow us to, to have more instant, instantaneous things, uh, more instantaneous accountability, so that it's not months and months down the line before it actually comes to light. We want to make sure that, that we have that accountability. Looking at a, a police advisory board or even a police review board allows our community to have um, more instantaneous uh, accountability. Because oftentimes what happens is there's a murder, there's a protest, there's silence, there's another murder, there's another protest, there's more silence, and there's no accountability in between because it's such a, a, a long amount of time that goes in between. And we live in a society that we want instantaneous because if not the 24 hour news cycle, it just puts something else on our mind. Something else goes on. There was another act of violence. There was something somewhere else. There was a hurricane, there was a pandemic. There's always gonna be a distraction, but we need to make for sure that we stop being distracted and that we, we make the moves where we need to, to make the moves. Protests bring voices. They help to make change, but the protests do nothing if the change isn't, isn't made in, in uh, our local laws and our local municipalities at the state level, at the federal level. We need to make sure we hold our police force accountable, not only the Harrisburg police force, 
we need to make sure we hold the state police force accountable. So I call on you, Governor Wolf. You were out protesting yesterday. What policies are you going to put in place to ensure that you hold the state police accountable? Because when it's protest on the Capitol steps, it's not just Harrisburg police that shows up. Harrisburg police is there to control traffic control. State police show up. When, 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 when tear gas was deployed or, or, or pepper spray was deployed, it was the state police who deployed it. The, the, excuse me, the Capitol Police deployed it. So the Capitol Police are also under, underneath Governor Wolf. So what are you going to do, Governor Wolf, to ensure that, that you put the proper things in place? What is the legislator going to do? You know, we've got local officials that they, they, they come out and they, they've done their march. And now what? We ask the people, you know, I see uh, posts on Facebook and I see different things to say, okay, citizens of the U.S., citizens of PA, citizens of Harrisburg, what are you going to do next? Well, the question is, is locally elected officials, what are we going to do next? What is our, what are our state reps going to do next? What is our governor going to do next? Every time it's time for an election, they want the support. We want the support. We come out and we do the door knocking, but now we, we need to stand up and, and demand accountability at our level. Is it a slippery slope, though? to put this legislation in when you already have a contract in place. Everything can be a slippery slope if you want to look at it that way. But we have to look at it as demanding accountability. 99% of our police officers want the right thing. They're not out there looking to brutalize people. They're not out there looking to harm people or infringe on anyone's rights. They're trying to do their job. They have a family they want to get back to at the end of the night. They chose this, this career pathway, not because it's the highest paying job in the world, because they wanted to serve their communities. So I don't think we should have much push, pushback from the police department. I don't think we should have much pushback from the, the fraternal order of police. I don't think we should have much, much pushback from the administration. I don't think the state police, capital police, federal, I don't think there should be pushback at any level because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We want safe communities. And it's how do we get safe communities while making sure our communities' voices are heard at the same time and ensure that they're not being over-policed, that they're not being profiled, that they're not being brutalized. How do we make this happen? And you can't make it happen if you won't listen to the people it's happening to. I've been working on legislation for a while now. Um, I've been working with different entities, with uh, with local advocates. I've been working with, with the police department. And there it, it hasn't been an easy path forward, but I think now is the time that we have to put it out in the public and that if someone wants to oppose it, let them oppose it in the public instead of opposing it in the private. Because we're getting a lot of, of public support, but in private, we're not getting the support that's needed to actually make it pass. So it's time to put it to the forefront. And if you, if, if you want to speak out against it, speak out against it in public. Make sure the public knows what's, you know, what's going on, the entire picture, the whole conversation. So I'll take one more question, then we're going to have to um, end it. So for maybe 20 or so years, and not just Harris, but elsewhere, I've heard all this discussion constantly about beat cops and community policing as part of the equation. And it never seems to happen. I know that Harris there are manpower issues, but is that part of the solution at all? I think, um, I think that's part of the solution. I think a big part of the solution is getting our, our community involved and becoming part of the police force. Um, I'd like to see more officers coming from the Harrisburg area. I'd like to see more of our young women and young men apply to be officers, to apply uh, to our fire department. We need our local support because you have a different passion when it's your community. You have a different passion when you, you know, you're born and raised here and you're brought up in it and you know the people in the community who you're policing because then you treat them differently. You treat them because it's your neighbor. It's the kids you grew up with. It's someone you want to high school with or it's someone you want to high school with's child. So I think that getting the community involved and becoming a, an active part and becoming a part of our police department. Um, we're always looking for applications in our police department. We're always in, uh, encouraging uh, minorities, encouraging local, uh, local young men and women to be a part of it. So I think that's the biggest solution that we can have. Um, I'll be looking to work with our, our local boards, um, even the, the Workforce Development Board if possible, to see what training we can provide to our young people to get them into the, the career pathway of police and law enforcement. All right, thank you all for coming. Um, have a great day.